Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Johnny, and just thank you for inviting me back. Um, I'm pretty excited just to hear the enthusiasm of this generation, and I'd like to stay over until Saturday night to see Tangled again. So uh, I've only seen it five times. I have gr 10 grandkids, so uh, and you'll see them in a couple of seconds. But anyway, I brought some pictures as if grandfather would. Anyway, um, oh, and I was thinking about, I have a... I have a very simple message for you this morning. I have a message that, that after, I've been married 46 years. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 70 years old, but I feel 40. So I look in the mirror and see this old man, but I don't feel it in any way. So, uh, but the very simple message today that, that talks about um, when you get into a relationship right here on campus, friendship or or dating and, and you start getting serious, most people want to keep that relationship if they want it to grow and develop maybe into marriage. And so and then when you get married, you want that to stay. And, and we live in a generation where a lot of our marriages don't make it. And so I've just been analyzing over the last several years, why am I still so in love with my wife and my wife in love with me? And in fact, she texted me a little while ago saying, you know, I miss you, I love you. Uh, get home to me in a hurry. And so I am going home today. Uh, but it's, what, what, where do those words come from? And why do I still have such deep affection for her? And why do I have affection for all of my, my kids? And, uh, and, and I just wanted to show you, well, here, here's what it is. As a family, we've done two things for our entire life. Somebody told me this years ago, I, I, don't, I think it was probably my godly pediatrician that was taking care of my kids and I was asking them questions about how do you raise kids, you know, and how do you have a happy, close-knit family and all that kind of stuff. And he said to me, there's two things I want to warn you about. He said, make sure that every day you have high honor in your marriage and family with your kids high honor, and make sure that every day you keep your anger level as low as possible. So we've done that. My oldest is 44, and, and uh, my son Greg is, is 42, and my other son, my youngest son is 38. And so we did that every day, and we still do it today. And now I have 10 grandkids, and, and I want to show you and I brought something, I was trying to think of what could I, you know, hand out or pass out that would kind of illustrate what I'm trying to say today. And, uh, and so, uh, I actually, I can give them out now. These are $25 gift certificates at Chick-fil-A. I have two of them. Does anybody want, you know, like a, maybe you can have a, oh, you came up. And you came up. Very, you got to, uh, oh, just. All right, I was just going to throw them out, but I didn't anticipate that happening. But, um, but I can throw this. This is $200. Now, wait a minute. I have never done this ever in my life. I don't know what got over me this morning. I went to the cash machine, and oh, look at her hats are up, ready to go. And, and uh, I'm losing control. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually... I'm going to actually throw it. I have to throw it. I'm going to throw it. And so I have a f I'm going to throw it. Yeah. So but I have to tell you why I'm doing it. Okay, I'm going to ask you I'm going to ask you some questions. Just three questions. This is obvious, so obvious, but the third one's not as obvious as you think. Okay, the first question is what's more important, this money or Christ? What's more important, this money or other people around you? Other people. Other people. See, it's so obvious. Well, listen to this one. What's more important, this money or hardships? Hardships. hardships. <laughs> and do you know that one of the most life-changing things that's happened to me in the last 20 years is finally discovering you can honor trials. 
Paul said to boast about your trials. And, and uh, Jesus said to rejoice, which means cheer. Yay! Practice. Think of it. Think. Yay! Okay. Now, here's what I'm learning about that. I'm really way off my message, but here's what I'm learning about that. I'm learning that honor permeates because it's whatever we treasure, that's where our heart is. And so what I'm learning is that I don't cheer when I go through hardships, trials, conflicts. I don't cheer about the pain I'm going through. Like yesterday when the rude flight attendant basically, you know, said, you're not bringing your bag on whether you like it or not. I said, I know it fits under, I know, I, I know it fits. No, sir, turn around and take your bag back there. And so it hacked me off a little, okay? But then I realized, wait a minute, I'm learning how valuable trials are in my life. And I thanked God, and then I went back and prayed for her and, and uh, hoped that she would inter, you know, interact with me a little bit more. She didn't. And anyway, I don't allow anger to stay in my life very long, only minutes, seconds sometimes, because I know how devastating anger is and to all of our relationships. First of all, to God. You can't know God if you stay mad. And most people don't realize that anger is fear, frustration, and hurt feelings. So just think how many times we're frustrated every day. I don't allow the things that used to frustrate me, still do today, to last inside of me until the sun goes down. Because I don't let it stay. But what I let is honor stay in my life. Honoring Him first, honoring others second, and honoring God's creation third. That's what I do every day. That's the essence of my life and my family. And so... What I wanted to use the $200 for was to say that this stuff doesn't hold a candle to the difficulties I go through in my 70s. And, and I just love them today, and I actually praise and honor God. And it's such a strange thing to tell people because people get real confused. Like, you mean you can honor Trump? Absolutely. And, and so I'm going to throw this where... Uh, I just... I haven't... One of the parents caught it. What's the chances of that? Did a student catch it? A student caught it. Yay. Excellent. Now, I've never done that, and I wanted to do it. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually on, a, I'm actually on a, a book tour right now. I'm on a book tour like every year. The new one is called Guarding Your, your Child's Heart, but it's Guarding Anybody's Heart. And the reason you guard your heart is because Jesus has four commands, four commands that you can fit all his commands into. In fact, he has four commands you can fit all the commands of Scripture into. I love simple stuff, and when God finally showed me this, and I haven't found the exception yet, and, and the last one is rejoicing over trials. That's the last beatitude, how blessed you're going to be if you know how to rejoice. But now I realize the reason I rejoice is because good things come out of every trial. And they don't come right now because I'm in the pain, let's say, but they come. And so I know they do now, and so therefore I rejoice like James 1 about what's coming later. So anyway, this, this little thing I have here today, it's a DVD thing and a book called Guarding Your Child's Heart, but it's any of us. Because I want God's four words. He gave, G Jesus said, I didn't come to give him my own stuff. I came to tell you what God told me to say. And he said, he, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Only those who follow me are going to keep my commands. If my commands will live inside of you, you're going to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. I'm being freed at 70 years of age of things I never thought I'd ever be freed of before because of his commands. So anyway, that's what that is. And I wanted to illustrate it through this money. And so I'm on this book tour. And a few years ago, I was on a, another book tour. And I was in Portland, Oregon with my best friend from high school. Very good. Uh, my best friend from high school and college, Dr. Gary Lovejoy, a psychologist. And, and so I was on all the television things, you know, in town. Uh, I used to have my own television show. You wouldn't remember it. 1988 to 1995, a national TV show that I was on and, and uh, answered a prayer that I had prayed about. And so, anyway, uh, he said, hey, do you want to go see my dad? He was in his 90s, 
and they were my favorite family on earth, just an awesome family. So I said, yeah, well, he's in a retirement home, so we'll go and check and see if he can take visitors. So I went there, and, and uh, I was tired from being on all these different shows, TV and so on and so forth. And so anyway, he said, just sit here in the, in the, in the waiting room, and, and I'll go check with the doctors, and then I'll come back and get you. And so there was another woman in the room who was in her 90s. She was a resident of that place. And so I said, you know, hi, and she said hi back, and, and we engaged in this conversation for about 10, 20 minutes. And, and I was so impressed with how alert she was. And I thought, gosh, I hope I'm just a fraction of that alert when I'm in my 90s. But anyway, he came out, my friend came out, Gary, and he said, uh, uh, I, Dad can't take visitors today. He's in this certain condition. And so I said, okay. And so I stood up and I shook this lady's hand and I said, I said, by the way, do you know who I am? Because I figured she, you know. And she said, no, but if you go down to the front office, they'll tell you who you are. Humiliating. So anyway, well, these two things, honoring others, honoring the special person in your life, and watch how your affections and your emotion will be with them, with you for your entire life. Whatever you honor. And then it says in Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is to be honored by all. We honor it and our mate and our kids. And so I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures of my, my kids uh, and, and tell you what happened. I used to say when they were little, uh, I used to say, this is uh, my oldest, this is Carrie and her uh, three kids and little Zoe, uh, actually four kids, uh, no three kids, I can see three kids there. And so uh, Zoe came from Ethiopia. Carrie just got back from, uh, from Ethiopia, Ethiopia over here. And, and so anyway, uh, actually Carrie's got some kind of a bug she picked up over there right now, so they're trying to figure out what it is. But uh, Carrie's dream is to rescue and see adopted all of the 140 million orphans in the world. That's her dream. And she blogs it, and that's what she's praying about, and so on. Okay, the next one is, is my... It has to be one of my sons. There's my son, Greg. Uh, Greg's, dream, Greg's dream is to end divorce in America. And, and so they, because see, I said to them every day, what's the greatest thing in life? And they'd say, Dad, we know what it is. It's honor God, honor others, and honor God's creation. Well, all of my kids and grandkids do that very thing and are hiding God's, uh, Christ's words in their heart. And then my last one is my youngest son, and he is... Uh, his, he's also a marriage and family speaker and writer. They're both authors, he and his wife. He met his wife at Baylor University. Uh, she, she was a cheerleader, and he uh, was a quarterback in high school, but he, he worked out for a year to become a cheerleader just to meet her. And then after he met her, he found out she was engaged, and he figured that was something he probably should have looked into before he tried to become a cheerleader. Anyway, they had, there's their three kids, and his dream is to... Uh, change marriages everywhere, but to make enough money to support his sister and brother's dreams. So, but here's the point, of, the reason I show you this, I think there's one more of all my grandkids there together at one time with, there's mom back there in the middle holding Zoe and I'm holding Annie from China who Greg just adopted. So, here's the essence of this. We are a family that still honors each other we hold each other in high esteem. I'm like speaking to the largest Christian university on earth. Right? Held in high esteem by people everywhere. So many places I go that I hear about Liberty University. High esteem. Because you honor it, I honor it. The administration honor it, Johnny honors it, pastors and so on. Whatever you honor, you feel the emotions that go along with that. So this is exactly what we've done as a family all these years is honor each other. My son Michael, we were in a family dispute about two years ago on some issue and, uh, and Michael interrupted everybody and said, hey, we don't agree on this issue. 
We're a little upset with each other right now. But because we honor each other so high, we're going to make it through this. So just relax. We'll disagree and keep working on it until we get the solution. But because we honor each other so highly, we're going to make it like we always have. And we still do. And so, like, for example, when, uh, when uh, uh, my wife and I went to Hawaii uh, with our staff, actually, years ago, and we, uh, no one clapped for Hawaii. You did? And, uh, and so, uh, anyway, we stayed at the Sheraton, at the downtown Sheraton in uh, Waikiki, and we, I was going to have a marriage seminar there at the hotel at the Sheraton, and so we all went a little bit early. We took about 20 or 30 of our staff members. And uh, they were all excited, and one of them was going to get engaged, you know, he brought his girlfriend along, and he was thrilled about the whole thing of Hawaii and the romance of all that, and so on. And so, anyway, we'd been there about four days, he hadn't asked his, this girl to marry him, he was, you know, trying to get the, the nerve up, and so it was supposed to do it on Monday, so it was Monday morning, and it was four days away from the marriage, my marriage seminar, and so I, I was, uh, I got up early, about six, to, you know, just see what the day was like and stuff, and I couldn't sleep anymore because I knew it was going to be kind of an exciting day. And so I sneaked outside on the patio, and I, it was awesome. I mean, there was no wind, the water, the light, and just it was gorgeous. And I got all romantic inside, and, and, and I, you know, the sun was coming up with diamond head, you know, and I, it was just like a, one of those rare experiences. So I sneaked back in. The, well, actually, I didn't sneak. I opened up the curtains, and I woke my wife up, Norma, and I, I, I invited her to join me, you know, out in, in the patio to see the sunset. We could have breakfast out on the little table out there and so on. And she, she was trying to wake up and she said, well, what time is it? I said, it's six. And she said, I told you last night. And she's kind of a, you know, a very scheduled person. And, and, uh, and, and she said, I told you last night I wanted to sleep till seven. Ooh, I said, I forgot that, but it's so inspiring outside. Come on, join me. And she said, no, I really don't want to. And I said, come on. And so I, knew, I said, you're not going to go back to sleep. I know you. So I took the covers and I jerked them off for a little bit. And, and uh, she pulled them back up and she said several words that were semi-offensive. And, uh, and so anyway, I, so I, uh, you know, I said, come on, you're not going to. And I jerked it off her completely, you know, and I grabbed her by the legs and I started pulling her out of bed. And uh, she said a whole bunch of things, but a lot of them were not, you know, nice at all, pretty offensive. And, and, uh, and so I dropped her legs, and I just stood there in shock. I couldn't believe those words came out of her mouth. And so I didn't know what to do. It's like the country western song, you, some of you know, uh, how can I kiss the lips of the woman at night who's used those same lips to chew on my behind all day long? And so, uh, so I realized I had a mess on my hands, and so we started arguing, and we escalated right out of control. We had like an hour argument with me standing there, her in bed. She finally said, I'm done talking to you. Uh, uh, she said, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I'm done. You have ruined my day. And so I, you know, I um, stepped trying to, you know, engage her in conversation because it wasn't all my fault. And, uh, and so uh, anyway, she left, slammed the door, and there I'm standing in my pajamas, you know, alone. And my wife has left, and, and it dawns on me, I'm four days away from my marriage seminar. And I hate doing marriage seminars when my wife's not speaking to me. So I knew I had to, <laughs> I knew I had to kick in the gear. But here's, here's, the, here's the issue. Because my wife was so valuable to me, I realized how much I'd screwed up on that situation. And I realized I should have respected the first thing she said that she wanted to sleep till seven. Why didn't I do that? No, not me, my selfish uh, enthusiasm, and I just didn't do it. And so I offended my wife. And I knew I had to kick into gear to do what? To repair the damage that I had done. That's basically the way I've written all these books. Uh, it made my whole living on goofing up as a husband, as a father, because I goof up and then I figure out how to solve it, and then I write a book about it. And so, People buy those kinds of things. So anyway, it's, uh, I got, and so I, I finally found her around noon uh, at the lobby, in the lobby, and I walked up behind her so she couldn't see me, and I took her hand, 
gently, and she slung it down, you know, like that. And, and I looked around to see if anybody was registering for our seminar, and uh, I couldn't see anybody. But hey, it'll be okay by Friday. And anyway, <laughs> we were still strained out. So in the afternoon, here's what happened. I asked her if we could, I could take her on a ride, just sightseeing to her around here and there. And she said, okay, but she, was kind of, she didn't really want to. And so I, I drove her around. It, at some point in that drive, I said, hey, I wanted to admit to you that this morning that was pretty insensitive of what I did. And, and I should have been, you know, you're way too valuable to treat like this. That's the bottom line. And I was just wondering if you could forgive me for my actions. And she did. And then she asked me to forgive her for some of her words. And, uh, and I forgave her. And now, we didn't just warm right up, you know, immediately and, you know, grab each other, you know, because usually there's a distance for a little while, as you know. And you're going to discover that. How many of you are not married, incidentally? Just out of curiosity, okay? So, majority. And so you're going to discover that. How many of you are dating right now, as a matter of fact? Okay, very good, good. How many of you want to be dating right now, but you know, somebody really special? Okay, just good. Go ahead. That's, that's called active marketing. That's good. So anyway, so anyway, what happened is that that night this couple did get engaged. We were just getting ready to go to bed, and we all got redressed, went down to the lobby, and, and we saw the ring. We gave him a big hug. We all went next door to an ice cream store, and uh, and uh, I said to everybody in the store, it was packed out, hey, this couple just got engaged. And everyone went, yay, for you. And the ice cream lady said, well, free ice cream for you. And so we all ate, and I'm trying to pay her. And, and, uh, and the, light, the manager of the ice cream store kind of walked over and leaned across the counter, and she said, I don't know you as a young couple, engaged couple, but I got some marriage advice for you. She said, there's this guy on television, I think his name is Gary Smalley, and he sells these videos, and we bought them, and it really helped us as a couple, and I think you should get them before you get married, and this is when that move, uh, TV thing was going on, and, and, uh, and, and so they look at me, and I, I said, I don't know her, you know, and so he says to her, ma'am, that's Gary Smalley right there trying to pay you, so she screams, and uh, <laughs> runs around the counter, it's a big scene, she throws her arms around me and grabs and gives me a big hug, and uh, I'm embarrassed, and I'm trying to wiggle out of her arms and thank her, you know, and thank you very much, and, and it's just before I get to the door, Norma, my wife, she comes over, puts her arm around me and whispers in my ear, hey, you ought to order those videos. <laughs> Everybody's, everybody in my family is a comedian, so anyway. The point is, is that we never let a day go by that we didn't seek forgiveness from each other. And it was no more apparent than the time that I um, ran over the pet cat, our pet cat, family's, family's pet cat. People are applauding. How many, how many don't like cats, I guess, huh? Oh, wow. Well, I was in that crowd. I didn't like cats back then, and uh, I accidentally ran over Puff in our driveway <laughs> one night with the kids that were the, in the car, and everybody broke out with weeping and, you know, gnashing of teeth, and, and I didn't say anything, and I got everybody in the house, and my wife went to the bedroom and slammed the door, and uh, uh, I went, I, uh, Carrie was uh, comforting Michael. And Greg ran into his room weeping, and I went in there first, and I, I put my arms around him, and I just said, Greg, I said, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even know that you guys had this kind of affection for, I mean, I know I was, you know, I, I was mean to Puff, and, you know, and I wouldn't let him in the house, you know, and, and, and I just am so sorry. Would you forgive Dad? And he said, Dad, life will never be the same. I mean, you, you know, when I come home from school, he won't jump into my arms, you know, and I went, oh. So I'm crying with him, and, and she, he and I actually went out in the backyard and buried Puff where other animals in our home hadn't fared that well either. And so, uh, anyway, but, um, but what I, okay, so what I did was I, you know, put him to bed and prayed with him and prayed with Carrie, prayed with Michael, and then I went to my bedroom to see how things were there. 
and uh, the door wasn't locked, so that was a good sign. And I, uh, and I walked into the bedroom, and she was seated up reading something and, and, and in the bed. And so I knelt down next to her, and I took her hand. And I said, I, I feel really bad about what happened tonight, and I really feel bad about all the things I've said about Puff and the way I treated him. And I had no idea how much all of you loved him. I was like clueless. I mean, how did I miss that? And uh, she finally looked at me, and she said, oh, I know you didn't mean to murder Puff. And so, anyway, I sought her forgiveness. She gave it, and Puff's mother uh, was a, I, I didn't, wouldn't let her in the house, you know, that was the problem. She was a kind of a street walker, and uh, so that's, that's why she got pregnant. Anyway, that's why we had Puff, and, uh, and we couldn't get rid of Puff because he had a hernia, and uh, nobody wanted him, and I said, that's normal on cats like that. And uh, anyway, so the, the long and the short is, is that we never, ever, as a family, it was our goal, our dream, to finish every day where we were not angry with each other. We were not frustrated with each other. We weren't hurt. We weren't fearful of each other. Really, stress is just a social acceptable word for anger. So my own stress level is lower than it's ever been in my life because of the very words of Christ and what he says about the difficulties that we go through every day. The little ones, the big ones, all of them. And so I want that out of my life every day because I can't know God and his words like I want to if I hold these things inside. I have to forgive. I don't forgive for their sake. I forgive for my sake. Because not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and hoping the one who offended you gets sick. Because the anger is what kills us and our body and our life and our relationships. So anyway, I'll close with this one. When Greg was about six, I had a rule in my home, nobody screams when I'm on the phone because I didn't want people to think my family was out of control. And so I was on the phone with a pastor one time and Greg came into the bedroom screaming and hollering and jumping and, and I said, you know, and uh, he wouldn't go. So I said to the guy, something's come up, I have to get back to you later and I hung up and I grabbed him and I shoved him and he hit the toy box in the hallway and I said, you get in your room. And, and he, we had this little stick that they all decorated, and I very rarely used it, but I used it that day, a couple of swats. And then I, you know, he stood up and, and weeping, still crying, and, and I just said, I said to myself, there, that's what you get for violating that rule. And, and then it just felt horrible, because as I looked at him, I realized I have just offended this priceless person that is so valuable to me and I, and I just, I went, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I, I didn't even ask him why he was crying. So I dropped to my knees immediately. At my age, I have to hold on to something. Uh, I dropped to my knees immediately, and I said to him, Greg, why were you crying? And I used to go through five things, not all in the same order, but I used to get really soft, gentle, because that drives anger away right away, usually. I'd start getting as much understanding as I could. I would admit I was wrong after I heard it and understood. I would try to hug if they didn't want to touch, but I would always ask them to forgive me, and I usually have to ask them to forgive me first. So watch out, watch the sequence here, because this just was melted into my heart, because I didn't want anger in my home or in me. So I said, Greg, I'm so sorry. You're way, way too valuable to treat like this. I feel like such a, such a, you know, an abuser, Greg. I mean, just feel horrible. I said, here, you take the stick. I'll lay across the bed. You spank daddy if you want. And he took the stick and dropped it and backed up because I knew, now I know he's really hurt. And so I said, what in the world were you crying for? And he said, Dad, Daddy, I was crying because I, I hit the bath, I fell in the bathtub with my ear when I was in there. There was water in the bathroom and, and I saw the blood now and I went, oh. And then he said, and then Daddy, when you pushed me in the hall, I hit the same ear in the toy box. I went, oh. I said, I'm just so wrong to have done that, Greg. And I don't know whether you can do this or not, but could you forgive Daddy? And he, he instantaneously ran into my arms and just held me. We fell across the bed and, and he said, I mean, I was, he was still, <laughs> you know how they are. And I just, I said, oh, are you sure you've forgiven me? Look at your ear. And he says, oh, he patted me. He says, oh, daddy, we all make mistakes. Now, 
What, was, what motivated me to do that? Because he's so valuable, very valuable. If you add honor to your relationships and you keep, it, it, Scripture says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, preferring one another in honor. You keep that. Watch how your relationship stays alive and thrives. Thank you very much. Love doing it.